Hey, this is Dancing Rabbit, and welcome to another Late Weekend Pagan Perspective. This has got to be at least the seventh or eighth time I've tried to do this direct YouTube upload thing because my old desktop computer is not working very well, and I thought this would be quicker, but I guess not. Anyway, on to this week's question. It has to do with the acceptance by the pagan community of Goths and vice versa. So, you know, on the one hand, what do I know about that? Well, not a whole lot. I'm 61 years old, and I'm not a goth. I don't personally know any goths that are, you know, out to me about their gothicness. I, you know, maybe I do, maybe I don't. But I really like to talk about something that I had some personal experience with, and this I kind of don't. Um, but I can give you my opinion. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I will. So, uh, it's my take that goth is a, uh, a subculture. It's a music style, a style of dress, a philosophy, an attitude, uh, a type of music. Did I say type of music already? Uh, when you do this thing several times in a row, you forget what you said or what you said last time. Anyway, it's a subculture, and it's not a religion. So you can be a Christian goth, or an atheist goth, or I guess a Buddhist goth, a Muslim goth, a, an Orthodox Jewish goth, or a pagan goth. Uh, you know, the two, the religion and the um, subculture, really don't have a lot to do with each other. They're kind of separate but interlocking parts of somebody's life. Uh, I see nothing particularly wrong or evil about goth subculture. No doubt there are some people in it who are, but there are some people in everything that are or, and aren't. What I could relate it to, uh, two things really. Uh, the first is the subculture that I was part of back in the day in the late 60s, 67, 8, 9, and 70, and that's the hippie subculture. Now, I grew up in a small working class town in southeast Arkansas to very conservative parents, and I didn't go to Greenwich Village or San Francisco, missed the summer of love, uh, didn't go to Woodstock, didn't even smoke pot. But um, I was very attracted to the, the uh, hippie subculture. I uh, wore bell bottoms. I let my hair grow as long as my dad would let me let it grow. I listened to folk and psychedelic music, Mamas and the Papas, Iron Butterfly. Um, I remember listening to the uh, Top 40 every week from WLS AM in Chicago and uh, snuggling under the covers with my transistor radio turned low next to my ear listening to Beaker Street on KAAY uh, 1090 out of Little Rock. That was the underground, the kind of alternative, really hip, really deep, really heavy uh, rock. <laughs> um, was I just a wannabe? Well, maybe, maybe not. But I think that you can get into any sort of subculture, whether it's goth or the 60s hippie subculture, to whatever extent, to whatever degree you want to or are able to, given your circumstances. I was drawn to it partly because it was new, it was cool, it was the end thing to do to be. Partly as a rebellion, and I don't think that's bad. It's normal for a teenager, preteen, I guess now, and 20-something year old to be rebellious, to be adventuresome, to think about new things, to do things different, to break the mold. And if you're not going to be rebellious then, when are you going to be? What are you waiting on? The other thing that I could say about Goth is that I would highly recommend Raven Digitalis' book, Gothcraft. Now, some have criticized it as being rather shallow. I mean, he spends nearly half the book describing the various types subtypes within God. And some have looked at it as if he's being prescriptive, saying, well, if you want to be this or that kind of God, then you should dress like this, wear makeup like that, uh, you know, talk and act such and such a way. I think that what he was really trying to do was to describe, not prescribe, the various 
types of goth and to say that goth is not one monolithic thing and you put on this goth uniform and you're a goth that it's many different things. It's a collection of things. It's an attitude of philosophy, a way of thinking of life. Um, I would highly recommend it either to buy it or at least check it out of a library or borrow it from a friend or something. I read it. I enjoyed it. There is not a great deal of unique craft uh, stuff in it that is uniquely gothic. But it's a good read, and I think it uh, really points out the, the the fact that, of course, you can be a goth and be a pagan. I uh, usually go to the big festival at Council of the Magical Arts. I'll be there in a couple of weeks, and uh, I'm sure that there are lots of goths there. It's kind of hard to tell because everybody dresses and undresses kind of weirdly there. But I think if I went to teen camp and I said, okay, honest guys, uh, how many of you are goths? I'd probably get a lot of raised hands. And that's cool. Now, why do some pagans dis goths and vice versa? I think it's normal uh, tribalism, which is maybe a little more pronounced in the teenage years. I remember as a, a sort of wannabe hippie teenager, uh, being really down on the country and western kids that wore boots and bootcut jeans and western shirts or flannel shirts. They just weren't cool. They weren't hip. They weren't in. They were old-fashioned. Well, no, they were themselves. They were uh, probably uh, not dressing like their parents or listening to their parents' music. They were doing their own thing just in a different way. So I think that those sorts of downplaying and dissing other culture, subcultures is normal. But we as pagans can rise above just being normal and be more accepting. Um, yeah, are some people wannabes? Yeah, are they fluffy bunnies? Sure there are there with anything. But I don't think it's my job or really your job or anybody else's job to go out the fluffy bunnies, the unserious people, the shallow people and run them off or embarrass them. I think that it will take care of itself. Let me read from my book, Way of the Horned God, page 2. There are a lot of reasons people are drawn to paganism, some good, some not so good. Paganism is not a fashion statement, a click or scene to join, a way to be really weird at school, a way to drive your parents crazy, or learn lots of spells and get powerful. If you seek the Horned God for those reasons, you'll be disappointed. If, however, you're a young man who is interested in working toward harmony within yourself and with nature, then this book is written especially for you. So introduction over, let's get on with it. And, uh, shameless plug, buy my book. It's out in uh, electronic form now, as well as paperback. Uh, let's get on with it. Let's get on with the business of being pagans, doing paganism, and so if there are goths at your school or your friends, or maybe they're not your friends, they're not in your clique, be nice to them. Get to know them. Let them get to know you. It's by building bridges rather than walls that, you know, we make the whole world a little bit better place than it was. So till next time, this is Dancing Rabbit wishing you peace and love. Bye-bye.